Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. I had a question about loading scenes on a timer, and I just wanted to answer that real quick with this video and a quick example of how you would do this. So the scenario is you have a project or game where something's going on, maybe it's not so interactive, you're showing some things, and then after a certain amount of time, you just want to load into the next scene, and then that one will go on for a while could be playing a video, could be doing something else. And then after time, that one will also load into the next scene. So I'm gonna show how to set that up real quick and the, the scripting behind it and what you need to do. And this is again, a pretty basic example. So this would apply if your game loads scenes really fast. You don't really need any player interaction or user interaction. You just wanna cycle through some scenes. So let me set that up now. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create a scenes folder just so I can start saving some scenes. And I'm going to put in, um, maybe I'll just put in a quick box. Let's see, a 3D cube. There we go, I've got a cube here. I'm going to pull my game view and my scene view side by side. And then I'm going to create another folder for scripts. Now I'm going to save my scene and I'll just save this as level one. Now it, for level two, I'm just gonna do the same thing, but I'll put in a couple extra objects. So I'll just go game object, 3D object sphere, and maybe I'll make one other kind of object in here. Let's go with a cylinder. All right, and I'll just move that over here. Let's see, what is that way right there. And now I've got three objects. This will be level two. So I'm gonna do file, save as, and just save this as level two. All right, so I've got two levels. Now I'm gonna create a script. So I'm gonna go back into scene one first, and I'm gonna to go to my scripts folder, just right click, go to create, C sharp script. And I'm gonna just name this load after time, or load level after time. There we go. All right, so the script is open. And now what I wanna do is delete out the start method and delete this update comment. I don't need either of those. And then I like to change the formatting. So I just do control K, control D to clear up the formatting a little bit and get everything on its own line. Now I'm gonna add a, an attribute first. So it's called serialized field. Just like the serialized field, not serializable. Make sure you get the right one and then there's square brackets around it. This just makes it so the field will show up in the editor. And I'm gonna do private float, um, let's do this delay before loading. And I'll set this to a default of maybe 10. This is just gonna be the default value if we don't set something in the editor. And now I'm gonna do this one more time. I'm gonna go serialize field, private string, and then we'll call scene name to load. And we're not gonna set a default there. So this will be the scene name that the script is gonna load and this will be how long it'll wait before doing the load. Now here I'm just gonna mark this as private implicitly or explicitly. It's, it's already private, but I like to put the keyword there anyway, just to kind of clean it up and make a match. Just personal preference thing. And what I wanna do here is increment a timer. So there are a couple ways I can do this. I could do it with a coroutine, or I could do it with a timer. I, I A lot of the time I like to use a timer just cause it's a little bit easier to debug what's going on. In this case, it really doesn't matter. Either way would work fine. But for this example, I'm gonna do it with a timer. So I'm gonna do time elapsed plus equals time with capital T dot delta time which is lowercase d, uppercase t. And you see this is underlined because it doesn't exist yet. It says the name time elapsed does not exist. In Visual Studio, I can just hit control period and then hit the generate field, I just hit enter, and it'll automatically generate this private float time elapsed. This is just gonna keep track of how much time has elapsed. So every update, we're gonna add the amount of time that has passed to this time elapsed value. The default will be zero, so after one second, this will be around the value of one after 10 seconds, it'll be about 10. I say about because there's the decimal points and maybe a tiny little bit past 10 or something. And what I wanna do now is check in this update. So I'll just do if time elapsed right there is greater than, so just the greater than symbol, delay before loading right there. So if it's 
greater than delay before loading, then open up some parentheses. And in here we will use the scene manager. So I'll go scene manager and notice that it doesn't show anything. It's not auto completing. If I hit period, it'll automatically give me the opportunity to add the using statement. So I just hit enter. What that did is just put the using unity engine dot scene management statement up here just tells it the script that we're going to be using things that are related to scene management and to pull in the scene management classes into our into our script so I'll do scene manager dot load scene and then open these up and we're gonna use the name so there are two options you can do the build index or the name and then oh, I guess there are four options because you can also do build index and name with a scene mode that just lets you load them additively so if you want to have multiple scenes loaded you can use that overload to set them as you know scene mode dot additive and then it'll load multiple we're not going to do that for this one though we're just going to pass in the name so that's scene name to load right there end it off with a semicolon and I'm going to delete these extra two using statements just because we don't need them that's why they were light gray close that off save it and now we'll jump back over to the editor and I'm just going to create an empty game object in here. I could put this on any other game object, but I like to just have an object for it. And I'll name it load level after time, just so the name matches. This is, again, the name is just there so that I can tell by looking here, oh, this is the thing with that script on it. And I'll reset the transform. Again, doesn't matter. I just like to have it nice and empty. And now I'll just drag the script onto here. And you can see we've got a delay before loading and a scene name to load. So since we're in level one, I'm just going to have it load level two. So I'll just type in level two, save my scene. And now I'm going to load level two. So I could just double click to open it up. One other nice little thing I can do that not everybody knows about is just take the level and drag it in. Now I have both scenes loaded at the same time in the editor. And now I'm just going to select this load level after time. And instead of recreating it, dragging the thing down, I use control D and duplicate it then just drop it into the other scene so now level two has its own load level after time I'm gonna get rid of that extra one that it put there from duplicating and I'll change the name uh, the scene name to load to level one now I'll save this scene both scenes saved and now if I press play here let me unload scene level one first so I'm gonna right click and unload the scene and in fact I'm gonna right click and remove it too now if I press play you see it's gonna run through but it's not gonna actually load the scene so wait 10 seconds one three four five six seven eight nine ten eight, any second now there we go bam lots of error messages now the reason for this is that the level 2 is not in our build settings so to change that we just go to file build settings and here we have scenes and build we need to add all of the levels that we want to load at runtime into here so first we can just add level one just by hitting add open scenes because scene one is open it'll just automatically add it there to get level two in we could open up level two and hit the same button or add it and add the, hit the button or I can just drag it from here into there and now I'm good one thing I want to do though is go to file save project and just save it otherwise if something goes wrong editor crashes I'll lose these settings so now we've got that in I just hit play and watch it go. In fact, while we watch it, I'm going to select load level after time. I'm going to go to here and choose the debug option. I'll drag that over so you can see it. Go here and choose debug, and then it'll actually show you the private field right there. So as soon as that hits 10, it loads into the other scene. And now you can see in here, there's another one running. As soon as this hits 10, it's going to go back into scene one. There we go. And there's no limit. We could just keep doing this. Just keep adding the script to load whatever the next level is after a time. And we're good to go. So I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, drop a comment, send me an email, or drop by the site at unity3d.college. Don't forget to like and hit subscribe.